There was no master plan for the first couple years of, of Baylor. But it was after dabbling in entrepreneurship that uh, I realized I loved the adrenaline rush and the uncertainty and um, the like, let's see what happens sort of thing. Um, and uh, the combination of realizing I was pretty good at engineering, it seemed like there was a natural uh, fit there. The, the initial kind of spark that got me into 3D printing in the first place was seeing this printer in action uh, in this professor's university lab. That totally blew my mind. Shortly thereafter, I ended up buying a couple of 3D printers and basically taking them apart, putting them back together in my dorm room. And that's when I decided, you know, I'm going to the backyard and I'm going to build this giant machine. <laughs> and so at the corner of Fifth and Daughtry, right off of Baylor's campus, that's where the very first printer was ever built. I think it was about six months before I graduated, I realized that this idea of concrete 3D printing uh, was a pretty special idea and I wanted to pursue it with kind of all my attention, all my focus, not as like a part-time gig uh, after work. And so right after graduation, I incorporated a company and I gave it a shot. I would not recommend starting a company right after graduation. You don't know a lot, uh, you're pretty naive, uh, and you don't have a lot of connections. Um, but it still seemed to be something worth pursuing. And um, for the first year and a half, it was really kind of tinkering, um, trying to mature the technology, get a sense of what I need to do. Ended up connecting with Jason and Evan, my two co-founders. Um, and they kind of brought their business acumen, and I brought the technology vision. At the time, in 2014, 3D printing started to become this thing that people talked about in kind of mainstream channels. Uh, it kind of started to get picked up. But I had a feeling that plastic 3D printing was not this game-changing technology, especially FDM printing, uh, which is what most people use. Uh, you can print little trinkets and spoons and you know little toy elephants, but at the end of the day, no one really needs these things. Uh, what people really need are homes, uh, and they need a lot of them, and they need them cheaper. Um, and so that was a mission that felt uh, worth pursuing. And so if we can put these folks in safe homes, it now opens up all sorts of opportunities to them. They can think about things like school and you know, going to have a job and feeling safe at night and studying at night. And when you start thinking about it, a home opens up so many kinds of opportunities to these folks. It was pretty neat to, to get to be a part of that. We can print houses that are anywhere between 500 square feet to upwards of almost 4,000 square feet. Anywhere within that range, we can print it. Um, so people think that you know it's, it's going to be a, a small little house. It's not that not the case at all. We've printed 4,000 square foot um, structures. We, we actually have printed now the largest uh, 3D printed structure in the United States. Our mission is scale and, and global scale. This is a tremendous honor. Um, I. Just remember thinking about all the folks who had, uh, you know, graduated from Baylor and who have gone on to do amazing things back when I was there, uh, and kind of like imagine that maybe one day I would do something, you know, just as cool. Um, and so the thought that you know maybe I'm considered as part of that group is just an amazing honor.